Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto and Niji start loving and then marriage, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. A small, 11 year old child dressed in an orange baggy jumpsuit, was walking slowly along the road, kicking some stray rocks with her feet along the way. The child had long spiky yellow sun kissed hair tied in a messy bun at the base of her neck, making her spiky locks frame her face, hiding the loose knot at the back. Her blonde bangs were shadowing her face, outlining the three whisker-like marks on her rosy cheeks. She also had bright cerulean eyes that were sparkling with angry tears. She was walking with her hands in pockets, a frown plastered on her scarred face. Uzumaki Naruto, one who vowed never to cry, was crying because she failed the stupid academy test again. Every year they put on the stupid bunch and no, which was her worst. No matter how much she tried it, it never worked, never. She always passed the written exam, it was never the best, but she scraped enough points to pass, same went for the practical, she didn't have a tojutsu style like her classmate Sasuke, Shino, Kiba, but she was fast and she went around the attacks, dodging them and giving unexpected blows. It worked on everyone except Kiba and Sasuke. Both of them were too good with tojutsu, and they were faster than her. Yuzumaki Naruto was a complete tomboy, she always got in fights, mainly with Acha, she dressed like a boy, loved orange, cause it was the best color, to Bayo. She never cared for her looks, mascara, her hair, like a certain pink cat and blonde who swooned over the last Acha. Honestly, she didn't even know what they saw in him, he was just a stuck-up prick with a huge ego, nothing more. But no, all the girls in their year saw him as some kind of a hero dot. Well, not all, she had to hand it to her, the shy Hayuga girl wasn't like that, but still, she needed a huge boost of confidence for sure. And there was her of course. The rest were all part of the huge Sasuke fan club, the leaders being Ino and Sakura. Currently she was passing by one of the training grounds. They were for ninjas who had graduated, not for academy students, it was forbidden to enter there, but when had that ever stopped her? So cleaning her tears away with the back of her neon orange sleeve, the young girl marched to the training grounds, intending to do some training and improve her lame bunshin. The training ground she had stumbled across was number 7. She liked that number, it brought a strange feeling of being complete to her. When she walked absently through the trees, she saw something black up ahead. Curiosity taking over, she went for a closer look. It was a memorial stone with various names carved on it. She knew that she wasn't the sharpest kunai in the, but even she knew that these were the names of the ones gone MIA, or those who died in action, in other words, heroes. To her that's what they were, true heroes, those who died protecting the leaf. She would protect it with her life too, she knew that. Her eyes searched the carved names, until she focused on one. Lenato Namakas, the fourth, her idol. He died a hero's death, saving the village from the nine-tailed demon fox. He was everything she wanted to achieve, and she was going to surpass him, she was going to be the best of them all. But then she remembered why she came to the training grounds in the first place, oh yeah, the stupid bunchin. Realization hit her with a bang and of the failed graduation twice, and certainly none of them had trouble with a simple clone, maybe she just plain sucked. No, hell no. She was going to prove to them all what Yuzumaki Naruto was made of. Come on, what was a stupid bunchin that she couldn't do? She will overcome it, no matter what. Okay, let's give it a try, I can do this concentrate she put her fingers in the ram seal, and screwed her eyes shut. Blue chakra started to swirl around her in a maelstrom. And release she let it out with a cry of bunch and no. She sneaked a peek. A greenish slightly dead looking clone looked back at her and dissolved right by her feet. Her shoulders slumped. You're overloading it with chakra idiot dot said a calm cold voice. Naruto snapped her eyes back open and whirled around to glare at the person who said that. The person turned out to be a boy, probably her age or older. The first thing she noticed on him was the Kanoha hit I ate on his forehead. So he is a ninja. Maybe he graduated a year earlier. But I don't remember him. The next thing she noticed was the scowl on his face. Like he was mocking her. Oh yeah, and how would you know she demanded rather rudely. The boy sighed. I can see the chakra circulatory system, but I am not going to explain it to you, you should have known about it from the academy. It just proves that it's fate that you are so stupid. Putting away her curiosity about what Keke Genkai was, and secretly not wanting to seem even more stupid to him, she glared at him harder and pointed an accusing finger at him. Why nonsense, stop calling me stupid. I am not. Besides, it's not my fault they hate me so much that they don't teach me. The last part was spoken in a whisper, but the boy heard it. Inwardly he frowned, while on the outside he didn't move a muscle. Sabotaging training. That's not like Kanahao is this kid. Naruto just sighed and put her finger back in the ram sign again. No giving up. What, can't you move somewhere else? I am practicing she snapped at him. The only reaction she got was a raised eyebrow. 
you know, you, an academy student, are in a training ground meant for shinobi. Those who graduated from the academy. I on the other hand am a shinobi, so who do you think should be the one to go away he replied casually, his arms crossed on his chest and eyes closed. A small smirk was playing on his face, like he had won or something. But Naruto was having none of that. Ha, hey, try and make me get out of here nonsense. But that she made the hand seal, and another dead clone popped up in front of her. She sighed and put her hands up to try again. Why do you try it over and over again when it's fated that you will never be able to do the bunshin? She turned to face him. He was still in the same position, only his eyes were open and showed anger. But Naruto noticed something deep down was it dot curiosity. Or maybe denial. She couldn't help but notice his eyes, they were pale lavender in color, pupil-less, but it didn't freak her out, she was used to such eyes, Yamanaka Ino had them, but the color, it reminded her of the shy blue-haired girl in her class, maybe they are related or something. Cause it's my way of ninja, I never give up, never, no matter what it takes, I'll reach my goal, I'll become so that everyone will acknowledge me for who I am, so that I won't be hated anymore, he chucked. It sounded cold, too cold for her liking, making the hairs on her hands stuck up. She unconsciously took a step back. You? And no name like you will never be, it's faded. You can't change what's faded. Hokage become those who were born to be, but not you, you might not even graduate and become a ninja with that clone of yours, that made her blood boil. She saw red. The boy smirked and caught the fist aiming for his head with ease. The a joke of a ninja, just give it up, it's your fate he sneered. She just jerked her hand off and delivered a roundhouse kick on his head. He caught it too and twisting it in an odd angle made her cry out in pain. Why do you fight against it? Because I can change my fate. No one tells me what my destiny is besides me. I will change it, I will not be hated for unknown reasons, I will become, and even if you defeat me now, I still won't give up. No matter what. Dadabeo. He let her go. She slumped on the grass, but quickly stood up and took a rather sloppy stance. It was all she knew of Tojutsu and as she didn't have any family to teach her, she used the academy style. She knew she couldn't defeat him, she felt the power radiating from him, but she could always count her speed and dot dot no that didn't work the first time, she needed a new plan, and fast. She didn't even know why, but this guy irritated her more than the Achiha theme. He only HNed when she declared her goals, but this one, this nonsense dared to say she wasn't fated to be a shinobi. Fate. Heh, what a load of crap. But to her slight shock that she couldn't hide, he didn't take a stance, he just stood there, looking at her like he was seeing her for the very first time. His eyes, the beautiful lavender jewels, were confused. I wonder why what had happened to him. Fight fate. You actually think you can fight fate. One who is destined to be a dead last will always be a dead last. He shouted, eyes blazing with anger. Suddenly he was in front of her, glaring daggers at the poor girl, daring her to speak. But she was Yuzumaki Naruto, she never gave up on her ideas. She stared right back, her eyes narrowed and her hands on her hips. And one who is fated to be a servant and carry a seal, all his life is fated to be just that, a slave. You cannot fight it. That's why you lost to me, it was fated, and that's why you will not graduate. It is fated. Naruto was taken aback by this. She didn't even know why she did it, but she put her hand on his shoulder in what she thought was a comforting manner, and just looked at him, eyes radiating confusion. The boy jerked at first at the contact, but then relaxed. He sat down on the ground, leaning on the memorial stone and sighed, closing his eyes with his elbow. The blonde-haired girl followed suit and sat on the grass, hugging her legs close to her. I'll tell you the Hayuga destiny of hatred. The Hayuga main family has a special ninjutsu passed down, it's a Juinjutsu cursed seal dot. Cursed seal she repeated, puzzled. My uncle and my father were twins, born to the main clan head. The difference between their births was a minute. It was fated that my father would be braided with the Hayuga cage bird seal and become clan head of the branch clan. So he is related to the shy girl. She was Hayuga too and wait, what seal? So you are related to Hinata. He looked at her, anger flooding him once again. Yes he said curtly. She could see it was a painful subject to him to talk about, and he was sharing it with a total stranger. She felt bad for a bit, but then again, she had felt herself like that too, so, Hinata-sama is my cousin. She is the eldest daughter of Hiyashi-sama, uncle. Wait wait wait, I don't get it, what seal? And why the hell is your clan divided into two? It's illogical she complained, waving her arms around. When she looked back at him, his expression was solemn, even calm, like he had already decoded his fate and dot didn't care anymore. She blushed and turned away, embarrassed. Amenasai hai san I will not pry anymore, I can see it's a painful subject for you and, no no, I will tell you. He slowly started to take off his headband. Naruto gasped. A green seal was imprinted on his forehead. Is he tied the back? Is the hai uga cage bird seal? The curse of the mark represents a bird in a cage. It is the symbol of being tied to an inescapable destiny. It is designed for the Hayuga branch members. 
This seal is given to all branch house members in the Hyuga clan by members of the main house. Its main purpose is to seal our Byakugan ability when we die, preventing an enemy from learning its secrets. Its secondary purpose is to control the branch house, since it can be activated at will by a main house member with a hand seal only known by them. It destroys the wearer's brain cells. Naruto was speechless. She never knew that clans in Konoha were so cruel. And whatever the Byakugan was, it was something important, like a cool ability or something, so it was natural that they wanted to protect it, but this way. She couldn't comprehend it, her mind was still working on it when the boy continued to speak. The seal is placed when the next main family member turns three. When I was four, I had this horrible seal carved in my forehead through that curse seal, as you see, it was done to me, on Hinata-sama's birthday. But why do you need that seal? To distinguish the main and branch families why Naruto screamed in frustration. It is not for decoration the lavender-eyed boy spat, looking coldly at her. She shrank back. The cursed seal is the absolute fear of death given to the branch families by the main family. With a simple hand seal known only to the main family, the mind of the branch member can be destroyed easily. Death is just as easy, of course. And the curse seal will disappear only after death, sealing up the ability of Byakugan forever. Naruto still didn't know what Byakugan was, but she had an idea that it was something very important if the family went to such measures to protect it. The day I was braided with the seal was also the day Kanoha signed a treaty with Kumagakur no Sato. But we were betrayed. At night one of them tried to kidnap Hinata. Hiyashi-sama killed him on the spot. It turned out to be the ambassador himself. Kumo denied all of it, saying that Kanoha killed their man for no reason. They demanded the body of Hayuga Hiyashi. Naruto gasped. His tone had turned bitter towards the end. But she kept silent, she felt it wasn't the best time to interrupt. They got the body they wanted, but it wasn't Hiyashi-sama, it was my father, Hayuga Hiyashi. They were twins, and with him braided with the seal Kumo couldn't have the secrets of the Byakugan. Naruto sighed. My father was killed by the main family the boy shouted, having the urge to ram his fist in the closest tree. You know, maybe it was his own decision. The blonde whispered. What? His face snapped to hers in an instant. She felt a bit uneasy under his gaze. Well, maybe he had decided to die, maybe just maybe it was a way of freedom for him. You should go and ask your uncle, talk to him. No I am not going to, but what if your father wanted you to be happy, be free, fight for your freedom. Just go and ask your uncle nonsense, and don't blame Hinata, it wasn't her fault. If she hadn't been so weak then, then what? She was three for Kama's sake, three. I had already mastered by Akigen when I was three, so did her sister. You are so self-centered you know that. She is a sweet girl, don't hurt her, you hear me? Or else. Or else what he sneered. Next minute he found himself eating the grass, with the blonde seated on him, his own kunai pointed at his neck. Past. I defeated you, a low life nobody like me defeated a genius like you. I can fight fate, it's time you did too, and I am going to get the clone down, I am going to graduate, and I sure as hell am going to be. Without another word she got up, dusted herself and left, leaving a confused Hayuga to ponder on everything that happened today. He came to one conclusion. The day was weird, very weird. Naruto huffed and growled as she crawled in her bed that day. The Hayuga boy had pissed her off. She was so frustrated that she didn't even dry her hair off after the shower. Dch, stupid idiotic nonsense. Hope he at least got what I meant dot dot in that seal, she shivered. Sure she might not meet the guy again, but the seal affected her, she even felt some sort of a connection with him, even if she herself couldn't quite explain it. She wanted to get rid of the seal, she knew that for sure. Well, it seemed that she needed a small trip to the library to find anything on seals. If there was, after all, she was still an academy student. She turned to lie on her stomach and tried to sleep. The face of the brunette Hayuga came popping in her mind again. Ugh. She slapped a pillow over her head and groaned. The academy was over, she had three months of vacation before the last term started again. Last year she sighed. She needed to get the bunshin down, or else she would be thrown out of the ninja system. How will she become if it happened? Her frustration rose when she went to the library. It was only civilian stuff, no shinobi scrolls at all. Only theory and who needed it. And absolutely nothing on seals. So with nothing left to do, she marched to the same training ground again. PCH, team, you are so going down. Making the ram sign she screamed. Unshin no jutsu. Takra circled her again and a pop was heard. It was a clone, a dead one. Again. She groaned and screamed, muffling the sound in her arms. You are overloading it again stupid. The voice surprised her and she jumped. Her stomach did a small flip and her cheeks turned pink. He was there, casually leaning on one of the trees, eyes closed, arms crossed and a small smirk on his face, again. You again. How the hell do you know? And what are you doing here? Don't you have your own team or something? And why the hell are you looking at me like that? Why? She found a hand over her mouth, stopping her rumbling. 
he sighed. Well, to talk to my uncle about it, and you, he started, then paused seemingly unable to continue. She raised her eyebrows. You were right he admitted, it was my father's choice, he told me to fight in the last letter. Thank you for making me see. The blonde smiled, it was visible by the way her eyes crinkled upwards. It felt nice to know she helped him, sort of like he needed her. And I know because I have the biacugan, I am training here, besides I wanted to talk to you, yes, I have a team, but the training starts only in a few hours, so do the missions, and I am not looking at you, he huffed and looked away, trying to hide his reddening cheeks. Huh? Why is he all red? Do all Hayuga turn red around me? Naruto thought it might be her imagination, so she just shrugged it off, but the small butterflies in her stomach were making it a bit hard for her. What's wrong with me? She looked him over. She had to admit, he was dot cute. His long brown hair that cascaded down to his lower back. Eh, mine is longer. He was dressed in a white shirt and shorts with bandages going up his right hand and left leg. He had a sharp chin, and the smirk on his heart-shaped face was gorgeous, she had to admit it. But the most amazing were his eyes, those pools of lavender that were currently laughing at her visibly reddening face. She quickly compassed herself and stomped on his foot, hard. Jerking his hand back he let her breathe again. Ouch. Grumbled the stoic Hayuga, not meeting her eyes. She was doubled over, laughing. When she compassed her face again and he faced her, she asked the first thing that popped in her mind. Ah oh, no, so what's by Akigen? There was only one thing that crossed the mind of the Hayuga genius Niji as he lay on his bed, trying to get some sleep. Kami knew he needed it, and needed it now. This day was very weird, by all standards. To understand the predicament that the young boy had found himself in, let's make a short trip to the past, namely the morning of that fateful day. It was a very warm morning in Kanahagakur no Sado, very quiet and peaceful. Unless you counted the racket that was in the academy at that point. The newly graduated bunch on kids were all yelling in happiness, swooning over him sigh he needed to do something about that fan club of his, with hearts in their eyes, he never figure how they even graduated in the first place, they will never survive the cruel world of shinobi with that attitude. He calmly went over to sit at the very back and quietly observe everyone present. There were a lot of kids, in his opinion, too many. None of them were fated to be shinobi. His eyes fell on a boy dressed in a white kimono type top, his braided jet black hair waving back and forth as he told his comrades that he passed with unhidden enthusiasm. The same Niji was surprised was an understatement. This boy was Rock Lee, the dead last of the lot. He couldn't do any ninjutsu or at all, his brain power wasn't that strong, and he was average into jutsu, nothing more. In other words, a dropout, useless kid who would only get in the way on missions. How the hell did he even graduate? But the proof of his graduation was glittering on his forehead. The Kanoha 8, a metal plate with a symbol of leaf engraved upon it, kept with a dark blue cloth. He turned away. The blinding light coming from his toothy grin could blind him, who knows. His eyes turned to the only female of the group who didn't swoon over him, even if he had a fleeting suspicion that she had a crush on him. It's not like he cared for females, they were useless in his opinion, besides, he doubted he would meet a female that would catch his attention. In the classroom on the floor above, where students a year younger were having their own exams, a blonde sneezed. A Girashi Tenten, a tomboy who was obsessed with everything traditional and weapons. She was probably one of the few, besides him of course, that deserved to be a shinobi. Quiet down yelled a voice. It was their sensei, who had just arrived. The plump man sighed and started a very long talk about the meaning and responsibility of being shinobi, of the dangers and of the times one should have to survive. He scoffed. Ties. They who aren't fated to survive will not, nothing can change that, no matter how they train and who they end up with. He of course, like many who came from shinobi families, knew that they would be placed in a three-men cell, a team. A team which will only get in the way of successfully completing missions. He was not pleased by it, but he accepted it. His father used to tell him stories of his own genin team, and how fun it was. Niji doubted it would be fun if he ended with this particular bunch. He sighed and turned off the chubby sensei as he started to say the teams. He would probably end up with Lee anyway, since he was dead last. It was no secret to him that the rookie of the year had the dead last. All the teams were balanced either by power levels or by team types. His team was going to be a combat team, he knew it, it was, after all, destined to be. Team 9, Hayuga Niji, Higurashi Tenten and Rock Lee, he sighed. Typical. But then again, it is better than to get one of the fangirls. All the students waited for their respective senses. If only Niji knew exactly how weird his day was going to end, he might have run, and he nearly did, out of fear to be around the man that had just entered the building. Dynamic entrance boomed a voice and a green something landed in front of them. Tenten blanched and leaned back, as far away as possible from the green something. So did Niji, but he compassed his face before anyone noticed. Lee however was bouncing. A sensei. You are our sensei. Yosh. 
He was about to jump and hug the man when he took a serious stance and said in a deep voice to follow him. Niji sighed and with slumped shoulders followed him along with a doubting Tenten and an overexcited Lee. They had their introductions, during which Tenten proved to be a true Kanoichi. She wanted to be like Tsunade. Not like she will ever manage it, but it still was much better than Fangerlism. And Lee, he wanted to be a Tajutsu master. He didn't believe he could do it, but nothing he said made the boy go down, instead he proclaimed him as his eternal rival. If only he knew it would end like that, he would have kept his mouth shut. Lee was already sprouting nonsense about flames of youth. He never knew they tended to have the same quirks as their senses in such a short span of knowing them. Lee had seen the man only once, when after training the henge he couldn't mold chakra. The man had come to him and told him never to give up. But it was only that, nothing more. They were soon interrupted by a yell from the green sensei. Bakashi, my dear friend, have you come for another challenge? They whirled around to find a very peculiar sight. It was gravity-defying silver hair. The only facial feature that was seen was the bored gray eye that was focused on the little orange book. The same book he had seen in the bookstore. He tried not to glare. Um, did you say something? Came the casual answer. They looked back at their sensei, whose face was boiling with anger. After that came the explanation. It seemed that this man was Hada Kakashi, the eternal rival of Mighty Guy. They always had challenges. Currently it was 28 to 29, the silver-haired man was winning, so he got to choose. The choice turned out to be Jan Ken Pon. And Haddock won. But their sulking sensei brightened and proceeded to run laps around Kanoha using his hands. He left three bewildered behind, one thinking that he was crazy, one cursing fate, and one thinking he's a genius. Haiwuga Niji left after that, pondering on his predicament and thinking what would his father say. His feet carried him to training ground 7, namely to the memorial stone. He stared for a long time at the name of his father, before he felt someone approaching him. He quickly took a few steps back and leaned on the tree facing the stone. It was a blonde child, no one could be seen, so the child was an academy student. He took a closer look. It was a girl. A very beautiful girl. His eyes widened at this thought, and he mentally slapped himself. But he had to admit it as he looked from her eyes, cerulean blue, clearer than the sky to the sun-kissed yellow hair that framed her face. It seemed to be tied in a bun that many couldn't see from the mane of golden curls. But he was Hai Uganiji, he noticed things many didn't. He noticed that she most probably had a petite small figure under the overly, his eyes squinted, orange baggy jumpsuit. He noticed the peculiar whisker marks on her cheeks. Interesting. Is that a clan trait? He was taken aback when she started mattering furiously under her breath while looking at the names on the stone. She then tried to make a clone. He snorted, albeit quietly. She put too much chakra in it. But no one, especially not an academy student should have so much chakra, it was nearly as much as Hiyashi Sama has. But she couldn't do it, he saw her try again and again, still she overloaded it every single time. Finally, he snapped. You are overloading it with chakra, idiot he said in a calm cold voice. She whirled around angrily at him. He was taken aback at her beauty, but those thoughts left him as soon as she opened her mouth. Needless to say, the argument was very heated. She even dared to call him nonsense a few times. How dare she? He didn't even know why he bothered, but he told her everything. Of the cursed seal, of his fate, of his father's hate, of the kidnapping of Hinata. He never told anyone about that, he always kept it all bottled inside, and now he was letting it all out on this girl he hardly knew of. And she took it all. She even defeated him in the end, proving that fate wasn't written on a scroll. It could be fraud and changed. But damn, she was fast. After that and with the last I defeated you, a low life nobody like me defeated a genius like you. I can fight fate, it's time you did too, and I am going to get the clone down, I am going to graduate, and I sure as hell am going to be she stomped off there, head held high, leaving a very confused Hayuga. What a weird day. It went weirder. When he reached home, he decided to do as the blonde told him, go and talk with his uncle. He didn't even know why he listened to that orange brat. Who the hell was she to tell her what to do? Hell no, he was Hai Uganiji, no female could order him around. He knocked on a wooden door, kneeling. Yes. May I come in, Hiyashi Sama. So now the young boy was trying to get the sleep he so desperately wanted. But the blonde haired girl kept popping up in his mind. She was right. He had found out the truth of what really happened that night. It really was his father's choice. He wanted to die, for his family, for his brother. It was all explained in the scroll his father, Hai Uga Hizashi had given him. He sighed. A few tears escaped his eyes. He quickly cleared them away with the back of his hand. He will need to apologize to Hinata the next day. And he had team training too, some sort of a test. Higurashi Tenten, a girl who lost her mother during the Kaiubi attack and the only daughter of Higurashi Akira, the owner of the best weapons store in all Kanoha. 
She will become a weapons mistress, he knew that for sure, and Rock Lee, he will excel at Tejutsu, but he will never beat him, Hai Uganiji, genius of the Hai Uga clan, a prodigy, whose Byakugan is far more developed than that of any youngsters in the clan. NOW that he thought of it, they would make a fine team after all. Just please please, Kami, don't let Gay Sensei corrupt them. And the blonde. A small blonde girl that opened his eyes. He still remembered how he couldn't take his eyes off her face when he in a burst of anger had grabbed her and peered at her, scowling. The effect was lost due to her eyes. He sighed and rolled over trying to get the image of the blonde angel faff, more like a devil. From his mind. It was a hard task to do. Damn blondes and their beautiful eyes. Wait, what? Get a grip on yourself. You are Hai Uganiji, you do not look at girls or think of them like that. It was a truly very troublesome day after all. A young boy with his brown hair shaped like a pineapple sneezed in his sleep. Next morning, before the training with his team began, the young Hai Uga went to the training grounds again. The train and just breathe fresh air and not look for a blonde girl that might be there. Surely not. The stoic expression turned to a smile when he saw her again. She was practicing Bunshin again. And failing. Bunshin no Jutsu. Thakra circled her again and a pop was heard. It was a clone, a dead one. Again. He saw her groan and scream, muffling the sound in her arms. It was very amusing to watch. A small smirk playing on his lips, he casually said. You are overloading it again stupid. He could see that he had surprised her, for she jumped and blushed slightly when she caught sight of him. This made a brow rise. Why is she all red? Is she sick? You again? How the hell do you know? And what are you doing here? Don't you have your own team or something? And why the hell are you looking at me like that? Why? He quickly moved forward and covered her mouth with his hand. He couldn't help but notice that he kind of dot liked the touch. Her eyes were twitching. He sighed. Well, I talked to my uncle about it, and you truly didn't want to admit it, but he felt that she deserved to know. She raised her eyebrows. You were right he admitted, it was my father's choice, he told me to fight in the last letter. Thank you for making me see. The blonde smiled, it was visible by the way her eyes crinkled upwards. And I know because I have the Byakugan, I am training here, besides I wanted to talk to you, yes, I have a team, but the training starts only in a few hours, so do the missions, and I am not looking at you. His cheeks flushed for a second at that. He refused to believe that this blonde girl caught his attention. No. But that didn't stop the reddening of his cheeks. Seeing that she was about to notice, he compassed himself and looked at her. She was staring at him, from head to foot, as though analyzing him. This made him blush a darker shade. Could it be? No. Stop thinking of Hai Uganiji, it's inappropriate, you are in the presence of a lady. Well he doubted calling her a lady was accurate, she was a tomboy after all, but he had some manners drilled into him by his father, and later his uncle. It was one of the main unspoken rules of the Hai Uga clan. It was then that he noticed a deep blush covering her face, one half of the face, since he had the other half still covered with his hand. He couldn't take it, he laughed silently. She was so fun to tease, and he had very little fun in his life. Suddenly he felt pain shoot through his foot. Ouch. Apparently she had stomped on it. He jerked his hand back and turned to rub the sore spot. Ouch. Oh no, so what's by Akigan? Now he really couldn't control it, he laughed, laughed out of pure joy, for no reason at all, and he liked it. A year later. Damn it. Where is she? We must catch that brat. There. No. Wait, there. The young figure clad in orange laughed in glee from her hiding place. It was really funny how they couldn't catch her. Well, she was naturally fast, but that didn't matter. She rubbed her hands together, a foxy grin crawling on her face. And then they say that orange is too bright and that I will be killed instantly. PFFF. She fondly petted her orange jacked, which was unzipped at this moment. No one messed with orange anyway. She brought her right hand to her forehead and squinting her cerulean eyes, grinned at her master prank. The pain was so bright and she had randomly splattered it across the faces. All in red, yellow and orange. The colors suited them. That was what she thought. And this was Yuzumaki Naruto, what she thought was right. And this was the reason why she was being chazzed. Not that they could catch her. She hopped from a building and blended to the opposite wall, using the simplest illusion just that even she could do. The crown of the noisy shinobi ran past her, still looking for the orange brat. She snickered. Then it turned to full-blown laughter. There you are Naruto. The girl shrieked and turned to face a pissed off scar. Dot. Again. How in the name of Hashirama's left? Not even wanting to finish that thought, the blonde slowly backed away. The hand grabbed her ankle and she went crashing to the ground. I ding. What did you do this time, Naruto? Said blonde huffed and stayed silent. Not that it took a long time for Aruka to figure out what exactly she had done. DCH dot dot why does he always catch me? She found herself tied up and unceremoniously dumped in front of the classroom. The children erupted in laughter. Naruto's cheeks went tomato red in embarrassment and she looked away, pouting. Imino Aruka rubbed his temples and cleared his throat. 
it didn't help. A tick appeared on his forehead, and he decided to use the most lethal weapon of any academy teacher. The big head no dot. Shut the hell up. Silence. After Iruka controlled his harsh breathing into a calm flow again, he announced. Now that Naruto here was kind enough to join us, we will review the hinge no. Drones filled the room. All the students were glaring up at the girl, who wasn't exactly happy herself. After untying Naruto, Haruka made them stand in the line. The girl in front of her, Yamanaka Ino, turned around and glared at her. This is all your fault Naruto. Said girl chose to ignore this. Instead, she decided on a prank. Right dot dot I'll use the he. <laughs> she laughed evilly, making Shikamaru Nara and Ichiha Sasuke raise eyebrows at her, the latter though, unnoticed. Naruto Sakura came Aruka's voice. A pink-haired girl, with a red ribbon tied like a headband on top of her head came forward. She was dressed in all red and had a weird spiral-like sign etched on the fabric. Maybe it's a clan. But Sakura-chan is from a civilian family, right? He, weird parents then, naming a kid with pink hair Sakura. If they were alive, a certain Reed and a certain blonde would have sneezed. Deep inside a dark sewer, a red eye opened and a snort escaped the being. Right anyways, no wait, Niji will kill me if he finds out, but this is my class, and he is on a mission, so no harm done. Yush, now then. She focused her eyes on Ichiha Sasuke as he stepped forward and did a flawless transformation into the Sandane. He really was good, no wonder he was called a prodigy. As Naruto watched him, she remembered how she used to want to be like him, just as cool, just as acknowledged. She had declared him her rival till death. When he had lost his clan, she understood his pain, at least she thought she did. And the day, when she was walking alone, seeing him on the edge of the river, alone made her feel sad, she wanted to make him smile for some reason. She remembered the full smile she had given him, the foreglaring of course, and the small, hesitant ghost of a smile she had received back. From that day on, she always considered him a friend. Sure he was a jerk who had a stick up his face, but he noticed her, and in a way, she felt connected to him. She remembered their every spar, and that he always won. She growled. Just wait for Ichiha Sasuke, one day dot I'll definitely defeat you. She even forgot that she was the dead last of the whole group. Yuta Naruto. Pay attention. And come up here yelled Aruka. The blonde snapped back to reality and confidently walked to the middle of the classroom, a smirk adoring her face. She stole another glance at her rival, her eyes daring him to see how awesome she was. But the smirk she sent her way chilled her to the bone. And his eyes dot dot what the hell was wrong with them. Quit staring at your team. Huffing, she faced Aruka, and with a foxish grin that made her dread what was coming, disappeared in a cloud of smoke. When it cleared, it showed a beautiful girl, who looked like a much older version of Naruto herself. Blood sprouted from the nose of the instructor, and he was sent flying into the wall. But the pop the blonde transformed back to herself and pumped her fist in the air with a triumphant yada. She turned around and sweat dropped. Nearly all the guys were drooling, except Jiaoji, who was always focused on his beloved chips, Shino, well dot dot you couldn't tell, he always covered his face, and Shikamaru, who was sitting there with a troublesome expression on his face. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the usually emotionless Achiha, who was covering his nose, and his cheeks were pink. They started laughing, pointedly staring at Sasuke with mirth-filled eyes. Said boy glared at her and turned around, hurriedly running his sleeve over his face. Who knew the Achiha could forget that he was the noble part of Konoha? or that the last Ichiha was a hidden pervert. The blonde stopped laughing when she felt a tap on her shoulder. Her instinct was telling her to run for it. But she was in Yuzumaki Yuzumaki fear nothing except the very angry Sakura and the fan club behind her. Naruto laughed nervously and looked around for an escape. Imino Aruka woke up 10 minutes later to find his blonde student in a bloody heap on the floor. He sighed. You are not going home until you finish cleaning this dot dot mess dot stated it, rubbing a thumb across his scar. Naruto, who was scrubbing the paint off the first Hokage's nose, just glared at him. Dot dot not like anyone's waiting for me, so who cares dot dot she muttered under her breath angrily. When will Niji be back? HMPH, going away for a few days. So what if it's a C rank? They heard it. Well dot dot how about this you finished this fast, and I treat you to Raymond he suggested quietly, watching the blonde tense. Did I say something wrong? But Naruto turned around, giving him a huge grin. Now that's what I call motivation. I'll be done with 5 Aruka sensei she yelled and started scrubbing with double speed. Said sensei sweat dropped and shook his head, smiling slightly. Said smile didn't stay long, but the girl didn't notice. He was just an academy teacher. He never got much of a salary. And now. Everything was gone. He watched in horror as the bottomless blonde consumed another bowl in one go. He had never seen anyone eat like that. Especially Raymond. Naruto however, was beaming. He felt a tug at his heart, but locked it away quickly. Naruto he did you do that? Don't you know who they are? He asked peering sideways at her. She nodded and slurped the noodles. Of course I know. 
They are the strongest shinobi in Konoha, all of them were strong and respected, I especially like Yandane. He was a hero, saving the village from the demon fox and all. I want to be like him. I painted the monument so that people will remember. One day, my own face will be there too, she took a deep breath and leaned back from the chair, eyeing the monument. The Yandane was her comfort. She always liked going to sit on his head, she felt calm and somewhat loved there, though she didn't know why. That helped her go through the pain, the glares. They didn't beat her up, but being thrown out of shops wasn't exactly painless. She smiled softly, her eyes gleaming with determination. Dust you watch, Yandame Hokage, I will become the Rakudame. By Rakudame came a confused voice. Oops, I said that aloud she gaped at him. After his nod, she rubbed the back of her head sheepishly. I really don't know Aruka-sensei, I just want to be the Rakudame. Not the Godame. She dug her chopsticks into the bowl, but realized there was nothing there. Aruka watched him musedly as she glared at it. He folded his hands under his head and said in a monotone. None of the Hokage failed the genin test twice. You know it's tomorrow, right? You didn't forget. Aruka sensei came an indignant yell from the short blonde, who had temporarily forgotten her Raymond I haven't. I will pass, just you wait, it will be my first step. She smirked then put her most lethal weapon to use. Puppy eyes no. W dot what do you want, Naruto? The girl had her hands together and was peering up at him with the hottest expression ever. Found only on cats, except Tora and Konohamaru. Um dot dot can I try on your headband? Aruka laughed, scratching his scar. No, this dot he pointed at the dot dot is a mark of a ninja who graduated. You will have your own when you graduate too. He ruffled her hair but stopped after a few minutes. I want more Raymond please. She sure knows how to get revenge. If anyone would have been on the southern side of Kanoha at 9pm, they would have seen a hair in a spiky short ponytail, shoulders slumped, walking along the deserted road and muttering about blonde brats who waited for all his money. Naruto had run off from Ichiraku's, yelling over her shoulder that she had to catch some sleep. Haruka believed it. The girl watched him leave, a sigh escaped her. Now, back to business. Off to the library. She knew it was already late, but this was something she had to do, thus she slowly broke into a run. As she rounded a corner, she saw it. A huge red building, carefully guarded by some seals. Only shinobi could enter, and even they had to be supervised on what they took. Plus it wasn't like anyone could just come in and take what they want. In this library were the general things, like theory. You couldn't find any here even if you searched for it for your whole life. That was what Niji had told her the next day of their fateful meeting. Naruto hit herself lightly on the head. Fateful? I'm starting to sound like Niji dot dot. She remembered asking him what the Byakugan was. And he laughed. Naruto had kicked him in the shins for it. Not that it connected, for she was sent flying headfirst into the bushes, but that didn't matter. After a few minutes of trying to calm down and not murder the smirking boy, Naruto had opted for sitting silently on the grass and listening to him. Needless to say she was fascinated. Niji had not only explained to her what Jinkai were, but also showed her his Byakugan. She would never admit it, but she liked it, it made him more mysterious. Then she pestered him about others he knew. Thus she learned of the Syringan and that Sasuke had it, but it was still unlocked. Also the Rinnegan, but since Niji didn't know much of it, she didn't learn much either. That day, before going home, Niji showed her the library, explained that it was only for theory, but that was all she needed for her bunshin to be normal. He had entered, leaving her alone for a few minutes. When he had come back, he had stuffed a few books in her hands. Takra and its types, history of the hidden continents. Kanahagakur no Sato, she had sputtered about knowing this from the academy and not needing it, but a look from his had stopped her. She didn't even know why she was listening to this jerk at all, and the bingo book, latest edition. When Naruto had asked where he had gotten that one, he turned pink and mumbled something about idiotic supervisors who didn't even look who entered the Anbu section. Naruto was impressed. After that they hurriedly left, and Naruto started studying. Little did she know that Niji had a few books of his own taken out from the Anbu section. He was, after all, planning an investigation of his own, regarding the fact that Kanoha was sabotaging the training of one of their potential ninjas. So here she was, standing in front of the library, her mind resolved. It wasn't for her cage bunshin, no she was here for another reason. She wanted to help Niji the moment she heard about the seal. And she wanted to remove it somehow. So, on the same night Niji had shown her the library, she had snuck in it from a secret underground trapdoor, concealed by grass and ivy. She had found it by accident when a stray cat had been looking at her. She had backed away till she hit the wall and fell right into the small opening. This was a hidden section of the library, not even Niji knew of it. She knew one thing it was small and dark and no one had been there for a very long time. She remembered having a coughing fit for when she landed on her backside, dust raised from the ground. Black markings were around the only door leading into the room from the inside of the library. So this is a seal. That's why no one got in. Sugoi.seals are so cool. 
In her excitement of finding something no one else had, she didn't realize the same markings were on the trapdoor from which fell through or that her finger was bleeding. This was where she was headed now. The blonde girl looked around her. No one was in sight. Stealthily, she sneaked to the trapdoor and biting her thumb, smeared some dark red liquid over it. The markings glowed. She pushed the doors open and jumped in. She heard the markings resealing themselves. After her first visit here, she had found out that this room contained all the information Kanahagakur had on sealing. Looking through the smallest scrolls, deeming them the beginner's level, Naruto had found where to start. It was a small scroll, explaining what was and the types of it in general. That was how she knew that the room was protected by a blood seal. Of course, she had wondered why the blood of all the people opened it, but she doubted she would find an answer to it, so she just shrugged it off. Since that day, along with the scrolls Niji had given her, she had started on Dodd only a year had passed, and Naruto could only craft the basics, like a small storage seal, or an exploding tag. She was very proud of her achievements though, for the scroll explained that it was very complex, and many cage didn't know anything beyond the basics. Naruto carefully walked to the very end of the room, where a small collection of scrolls was stacked. She had done this to have some order in the room. The scrolls had been scattered wildly all around when she first came. Carefully she took out a scroll from her pocket and placed it back on the shelf, then picked a few and opened them, her eyes scanning the contents. She deemed the first one she took was the continuation, so she pocketed it. When she was about to leave, a small notebook caught her eye. It was buried beneath a pile of huge scrolls, and only the tip was seen. Naruto stared at it for a few moments, debating whether to take it or not. Her curiosity overpowered, again, and she quickly dug it out. Her eyes widened. Sugoi. A few minutes later, unseen by anyone except the nature of Kanahagakur no Sato, a small blonde girl, dressed in an orange jumpsuit, was running along the streets. If anyone looked closer, they would have seen the excited look in her eyes. Uzumaki Naruto was nervous. No, scratch that, she was panicking. Currently she was hitting her head hard on the desk, waiting for her doom. She had passed the written exam, after all the reading Niji made her do, and she would never admit it to him, but she had enjoyed that book on history, she had even developed a habit of rereading it. The High Uga was very surprised when she had declared to him that she was keeping the book, and he must go prolong the time he could keep it. This had earned her a glare and a hidden proud look. She had gotten a good mark in Tojutsu they had to show the kata, and her weapon throwing skills were just as good as Sasuke's. But now dot dot it was the time for the ninjutsu exam. And Kiba had said it was a bunshin again, thus bringing her to the state she was now. She had stayed up all night, reading the notebook, engrossed into it. And she hadn't practiced her bunshin. Nothing she did helped her make a normal one. And Niji always said she was overloading it with humongous chakra every single time. After reading the book on chakras, she understood that she had a lot of chakra wonders from where no one my age was that much. Niji had suggested simplest chakra control. She would have to fill a leaf with chakra without letting it burn to a crisp. When he showed her what happened with his leaf when he filled it with chakra, her eyes went wide like saucers. It was slightly damp, and she could even feel the water moving there. She wanted the same effect, but her leaf roll was burned to a crisp and faster than anyone could imagine. Though, her leaf also splinched into a lot of pieces too. There were many times she cut her own fingers with it. She had remembered reading a bit about elemental manipulation, it seems that was what was happening. She had asked Niji, and Hihai Uga had confirmed it. It seemed she had wind base chakra, but it was much too soon to even try to control it. Why not? You can control yours, that's right, but I was trained in chakra control since I was two years old HMPH. They never really agreed on training with each other, or rather, Niji helping her, but they kind of met every day at the same time they met that fateful day, and at the same place. It became a routine. And when Niji was away on missions, Naruto practiced alone, a smile returning to her face only when the High Uga prodigy comes back safe and sound. He never taught her his tojutsu. It was forbidden, and he didn't want to, his pride wouldn't let him, plus one needed to have the Byakugan. Naruto didn't want another's style either, but she made him agree to sparring with her, so that she will find her own style. They had spent months on it, thinking up ways, and finally decided to play on her speed. Increasing it was important as well. That was why a green-clad girl found a blonde girl doing laps around Kanoha every morning. Naruto would never forget the day she met that freaky green caterpillar eyebrows monster. Niji had to calm down the hysterical girl while laughing at himself. That was his sensei after all. Naruto had vowed the same day never to get a weird sensei. A certain silver haired had sneezed, resulting in him tripping on Tora and his precious book being torn by claws. His howls even reached the academy where everyone thought someone was torturing a poor dog. Another white-haired man had sneezed, making all the women in the bathhouse shriek. 
He had been found beaten to a bloody pulp and dumped on the street by the garbage later. A small toad had also sneezed, resulting in an elder toad making a prophecy that this day was destined and he would meet a cunning fox one day, who would turn his life around. Fukasaku hadn't been happy that day. And far, far away, in Kumagakur no Sato, a sneezed, ruining all his rap notes and taking it out on his team. Kamui had sworn to beat the one who caused the incident to a bloody pulp. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto's head shot up. Well this is it. Kami help me. Willing the shaking to go away, Uzumaki Naruto entered the room. There was a desk, behind which sat Aruka and Mizuki, silver-haired, who sneered openly at the sight of her. The girl ignored this. After all, it was a common occurrence, nothing new. I can do this. Perform the bunch and no, Naruto, said Aruka kindly, pinching his nose with a pencil. The blonde took a deep breath and put her hands in a ram seal. She closed her eyes and concentrated on her chakra. She felt it whirling around in utter chaos. Little dot dot little, amount, wait, I need less, and dot dot release. Bunch and no she screamed and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Cautiously she peered. Her face fell. On the ground were two sickly looking clones, all dead. Izuki cleared his throat. Well, she did create two clones, Haruka, and she has a passing grade in everything else we could pass her. Naruto looked at the scar in hope, not noticing the evil glint in the eyes of the other. Haruka sighed. No, we cannot. The clone is crucial, if she fails it, then she doesn't pass, I am sorry Naruto. But said girl was already out of the room. Again, she found herself walking along a familiar path to training ground 7. Her feet were unconsciously taking her to the place she felt safe. She tried hard not to cry, but the tears stung her eyes. This had been her last try after all. She couldn't be a ninja anymore. She was a failure. And after all the training I went through dot dot how will I look in his eyes? What will he say? He dot damn it. She punched a tree, ignoring the fact that it tore the delicate skin on her knuckles. She punched it with all her might, leaving dents, her salty tears falling on the ground in a mocking manner, showing her how weak she was. Soon, after strength left her, she slumped on the ground, hands still on the tree, not knowing where to go and what to do. It seemed like something was taken away from her. So what if I can't do Bunshin? Stupid Bunshin who needs it anyway she sniffed. Niji was supposed to be back from that crank today. I can't let him see me not now. With that, she fled the training ground. She never knew that Niji had come back early, and he had been waiting for her here. But when he saw the state she was in, he decided just to observe. It pained him to see that she failed. He had seen her strength, and he no longer believed in fate, but this was absurd. He sighed, rubbing his forehead. The sight of her crying and injuring herself on purpose clawed at his heart. He gripped his chest in wonder and confusion. He didn't know why it was like that, but he knew one thing. He never wanted to see her hurt again, he never wanted to see her tears. Only her smiling face, full of joy. Silently, he followed her. He had to make sure she didn't hurt herself more. After sensing her chakra, which wasn't hard, as she never really repressed it, he ran off at full speed, not really understanding why he was doing this at all. Sure Naruto had become his friend, but so were Lee and Tenten, but he never felt this nervous or worried. Lee was injured during the mission, and even then he didn't worry as much as he did now. What made her different then? He shook his head, trying to focus and sped up. He found her slumped on the swing outside of the academy. All the other parents were congratulating their children on graduating, being hugged and kissed. And the look in her eyes told him clearly she wanted that too. Look. It's that child, she is the only one who didn't graduate. I'm glad she didn't, if that thing became a shinobi. Yes that demon. Don't you remember? It's forbidden. Niji's eyes hardened at the conversation those two civilian women had just had. What in the world is a demon? And what's forbidden? Naruto. He turned to look at her. But to his great surprise, the academy teacher, Mizuki, was there with her. What's going on? He followed them to the roof, and concealing his chakra, stealthily hid behind a pillar. Naruto was sitting near the roof, feet dangling and head low. Mizuki was staring ahead, smiling. He had never seen a smile so fake. Something's not right he is suspicious. Don't be too angry at Aruka for failing you. He was right you know. Hi, you know what? There is another way to graduate. It's a small mission, are you interested? Niji watched the man smile like a snake. Naruto however, turned to him with big eyes. Really? Don't be an idiot. Think, there is no other way of graduating. He is lying. Stop being an idiot. Niji thought, eyebrows furred and eyes hardened, staring at Mizuki. Yes, you simply have to take the scroll of sealing from the Hokage Tower and learn from it. What? He wants her to steal it. Naruto. He watched her expression. I was perplexed, somewhat relieved and confused. But Niji noticed something else as well. Her eyes were wary of her dot. So she noticed something was off. Good. The Hayuga stayed silent while watching the rest of the exchange. Mizuki had explained where exactly that scroll was and even told her the time to do it. Naruto agreed, then left. 
Niji however, stayed there for a long time, pondering. When the time would come, he would simply follow Naruto. He just hoped she would tell the Hokage, there was no way a genin would be able to get to the safely guarded library in the tower, even someone as good as Naruto, who was an expert of sneaking in. The brunette boy sat there, arms crossed, and staring at his hands. He had promised himself to find out why Kanoha was treating one of their own so badly. And he had come to some conclusions. She was hated by most of the civilians and most of the Anunder. No one spoke of the reason why. He recalled the earlier conversation he witnessed. Maybe there was a law about not speaking of it. Who knows. Naruto seemed not to care about the glares and various remarks, but Niji knew better. That was the facade, along with the jumpsuit. She only wanted to be recognized. Thus the pranks. But why was all this happening to her? His father never spoke ill of her, nor did his uncle. In fact, the few times he had seen Naruto with his father, he would always have a weird look on his face, and Niji couldn't guess what it was. And that was saying something, as Niji could read people by their expressions. All but that one. An expression he found on the face of his uncle when he asked him about the blonde. He never received an explanation. He groaned. It's already getting dark, she must have started with the plan already. I need some painkillers. I feel a headache coming up. He stood up and formed a hand seal. Iakugan. Locating the familiar chakra, which was already heading to the Hokage Tower, he quickly followed. To his unconcealed amazement, his jaw had dropped, Naruto had managed to steal the scroll, which, he had to hand it to her, was twice bigger and thicker than her. She had a triumphant grin on her face, with a hint of mischief. No way it must have known someone broke in. Are you telling me she did something to defeat the Hokage? Shaking his head in wonder, he followed her into the forest. She was already sitting on the grass, and the scroll was laying wide open in front of her. Niji hid behind a tree and watched. He saw her grunt, and her eyes widened. Did she recognize something? But it's the scroll of sealing dot dot what could. He saw her taking out a small scroll. But he couldn't fathom why she needed it. He had no idea what she was doing there with it, but after a few minutes, the small scroll was nowhere in sight, and the blonde had started to learn a dot. The Hayuga fascipumed, but stayed there nonetheless. It seemed to be a clone dot. A snort escaped his lips as he watched the girl have a small tantrum about it always being a stupid bunchin, and who needed them. She really is weird and funny. He was surprised that after her first try, she had already created 10 clones. He activated his narrowed eyes. Just as I thought. I can't decipher which is a fake and which is the real so this is the famed cage bunchin. After 20 or so minutes, Iruka arrived. What's he doing here? Finally found you Naruto, what do you think you are doing? His tone was very angry. Niji had the as his sensei only once, and he had never seen him like that. Ano sa, sa, Iruka sensei. I learned from here, now you can graduate me, right the hopeful tone in her voice made the team dread the worst. So she believed no, I can't have imagined it, she knows for sure. What? What do you mean graduate? You stole the sacred scroll of sealing, the collection of strong and dangerous seals written by the fourth, youth yandame. Wait dot dot that's not the point here Mizuki sensei told me to get it and learn dot dot then, I'll graduate. The look of disbelief mixed with horror seemed to have convinced Naruto, who had paled herself as well. So dot dot he lied to me and used me. Before any of them could say anything more, a figure behind them sneered. Congratulations on getting the correct answer, demon. Niji's eyes narrowed. There it was again, the look of loathing and hatred. Naruto was staring at him, the question plastered on her face. Why? Mizuki laughed. It sent shivers down his spine. You wanna know why you are hated? Why does no one love you and never will? Niji froze. Apparently, so did the other two. No. Mizuki, it's forbidden yelled this card in panic. I don't care. I hate her. Twelve years ago, on October 10th, the Kaiubi no Kitsune attacked Kanoha. Do you like the date he leered down at the blonde, whose eyes had gone wide? M. My birthday. Her birthday? What does this would? The fourth didn't kill the Kaiubi, no one can. He sealed it into you. You are the demon fox. You are the one who killed the shinobi, who killed lots of innocent people, who killed Iruka's parents. Iruka hates you too, everyone hates you. Niji's mind had gone blank, his mouth opened just a bit, in slight surprise. His eyes were wide. Now dot dot it explains everything. They fear her, because they think she is the Kaiubi most who hate her. They are civilians, they don't understand the art of sealing, and the shinobi dot dot losing loved ones dot dot people tend to try finding someone responsible dot dot just like dot dot like I did with Hinata-sama. He growled, hands balled into fists, veins popping around his eyes. Flashes of his time with Naruto played like a film in his mind. Her smiling face, her seriousness in training, the way she jumped up and down when she finished Akata, the way her eyes would sparkle with mirth when she told him she was preparing a surprise for him, the way she looked when he left on his first ever sea rank, the way she handled the glares and ignored them, the way she stared up at the sky, dreaming of flying herself. Was it fate that she was chosen? 
Why well, at least now I understand her a bit. Why she wants to become Hokage, to be acknowledged, to be loved. She, like me, has a seal that determines her fate, but even without knowing about it, she has always fought. That was why she could defeat me that day Narudoyu truly is amazing. Anoha should be thankful to you for being the savior. If I were in your place, I would go the way of darkness. I had started on it until you came and pulled me out. I am forever in your debt he whispered. The sound of a shuriken slicing through the air caught his attention and his eyes snapped back to reality. Taking in the situation and for the first time in his life, not thinking before acting, he threw himself into the fight, pinning the frozen blonde girl under him protectively. There was a loud splinch. A huge shuriken had grazed his back and flown to the side. Neither Aruka nor Mizuki expected this. Naruto, who was still frozen in shock, only now registered that someone had shielded her. Someone shorter than the Chunins. Someone whose long dark hair made a curtain around them. Her eyes widened and her mouth opened in a silent scream. Then dot Niji. What dot dot is he doing here dot dot he knows he is going to hate me dot dot to Bayo. For the second time in one day, she felt the tears sting her eyes and she left them roam free across her face. The realization that she had a demon sealed inside her by her beloved Hokage, or the fact that Kanoha believed she was the Kitsunin of them, could compare to the pain he was feeling now. Like white hot knives had pierced her chest in one go. Why does the thought of Niji hating and despising me hurt so much more? I don't understand. The boy grunted in pain and leaning on his elbows, lifted his upper torso. His face was centimeters away from hers. Then he leaned and whispered softly in her ear, at the same time, placing his right hand on her stomach, right where the seal was embedded. You were fated to be the one dot dot to control him, I am sure dot dot the fourth Hokage had a reason. This is not a burden, and you dot dot are no demon, Yuzumaki Naruto. Then he grudgingly hopped off, glaring at the silver-haired man in front of him. It had taken both a few minutes to get back to reality from their intense gaping. Naruto shifted uneasily in her bed, brown furred. It was nighttime, if the moonlight illuminating the dark room was any indignation. Behind the open windows, the stone faces of the Hokage were glaring down at the village, and the stone eyes of the Yandame Hokage were looking right in the direction of the small apartment in which the girl was currently sleeping. A drop of sweat slid down her forehead, going down her squinted eyes and into the pillow. The small blonde turned in her sleep, rather forcefully, and ended up in a heap of blankets on the floor. Eye tie, she grumbled, eyes still closed, and rubbing her bottom. Slowly, she opened her eyes, taking in her surroundings. My room. Oh yeah dot dot I was trying to sleep dot. Rubbing one eye, she got up, dragging the sheets with her back to bed. It was then that she noticed her window was open. The wind was blowing with so much force that Naruto had to catch, flatten and roll her hair in a tight bun. Kuzo, after quickly closing it, she scrambled back to the warm bed and draped the sheets around her. What a day dot a and d I can't even get my deserved sleep. Her eyes fell on a headband on the small table beside her bed. It had a small metal plate with a leaf symbol engraved into it. The fabric was dark blue and slightly worn out. The sight of it made the girl smile, but it didn't last long. She looked down at her stomach, frowning a bit. The seal. Flashback, Naruto couldn't believe it. She had successfully made it to the tower, past the guards, and entered the secret library. It was guarded with the same blood seal as the main Kanoha library. But she had no time to think of those things, she had a much more important task to do. She was no idiot. Well, not as much as people thought her to be. Dot, dot, no wait, scratch that, she wasn't an idiot. Period. She knew that something wasn't right in the whole thing Mizuki had told her, but this was also her last ever chance to graduate and fulfill her dreams. And be with dot dot wait, why is he popping in my mind? Go away go away. HMPH. Trying to make as little noise as possible, she sneaked to the very back where she knew the most important scrolls were kept. The one she needed wasn't exactly hard to find, for it was put in the middle of a drawer and it had the same blood seals around it. Linking once and willing the thought blood seals are very unoriginal. To go away, she quickly smeared the leftover blood from the earlier bite on her thumb on the seals. They glowed blue for a moment, then disappeared. She quickly took the scroll, balanced for a few minutes, this thing was so heavy. And so big. She started running to the exit, a triumphant grin plastered on her whiskered face. Of course something just had to go wrong. She found a confused Sandame Hokage in his nightgown standing in front of her, both eyebrows raised. She dropped the scroll. Think, think, think Dadabeo. She spotted an orange book badly hidden in the sleeve of the old man's gown. A smirk appeared on her face. Amen Jiji. Warwick no Jutsu. She landed softly on the ground and looked back. I knew it. Jiji is a perv. Something pricked at the back of her head, making her nervous. She turned around, staring into the dark space of the Kanoha forest. An owl hooted. I'm being paranoid. Nobody's there. Dot, I have work to do. The figure watched her disappear into the woods, not realizing his jaw was uncharacteristically hanging open for the flies to be invited in. 
Naruto stopped at a clearing and settled down on the ground. Trying to calm her adrenaline-filled heart, she carefully opened the scroll. She couldn't hide her surprise as she gasped out loud. This loopy, handsome and incredibly girly handwriting was very familiar to her. This scroll was written by the same person who had written the notebook on seals. Her eyes were wide with excitement. Quickly she took out a scroll she had taken to carrying around since she started learning, took out a brush, and quickly drew a small seal on it. It was pretty simple, and the first one she had seen in the notebook. Its purpose was to copy directly from another scroll. And that dot dot was what she was doing now. But the scroll was small, thus she could only copy something the same size as it was. Since she was planning to learn the first here, then she would copy it from the end. She heard shuffling around her and looked around in worry. She had to hurry. Not quite reaching the very end of the huge scroll, she put the little scroll over a part where an interactive seal was drawn, she placed her palm over it and forming the half ram seal with the other hand, muttered Fuin. Hurriedly, she rolled it up and placed it in her pants pocket. Now, let's get to learning. After that, everything happened so fast. She learned that, which was a clone one, much to her annoyance, heard running and a flustered Aruka yelling at her. She remembered trying to explain it, while the thought of doubt that had always lingered at the back of her mind, resurfaced with each word she tried to say, she remembered appearing, with a mad grin over his face, she recalled her shaking, and the fear that clawed at her heart, the anger she felt, and truth that left her standing there, paralyzed, unmoving. The only indication that she was still there was the breath that came out, a thaw tearing the barely visible shaking of her body, her face that had slowly paled, and her eyes that were widened by the flashback she was having. She wanted to deny it. She wanted to be a normal kid who wanted to be a shinobi. She never asked for any of it. She was a demon. One who killed others. One who killed Aruka's parents. She never saw Aruka getting hurt, nor the flying shuriken aimed at her. When she had finally come back to her senses, she was lying on her back and someone was on top of her. She didn't feel any pain, meaning the one who shielded her got hit. But why, who would do that? She was a demon dot dot a monster, she felt something cold on her cheeks. What am I crying? Ignoring the tears that were steadily flowing from her eyes to her hair and on the ground, she tried to focus dot. Only then did she notice that the person on top of her was smaller than Aruka or Mizuki, and the fact that the person's long dark hair had fallen from the tie and had formed a curtain around their heads. Realization hit her. She felt her eyes widening and her mouth opening in a silent scream. Then dot Niji. What dot dot is he doing here dot dot he knows he must have heard everything. He knew she was a demon now. He is going to hate me dot dot to Bayo. Her eyes stung. She felt something cold on her cheeks. What am I crying? And dot Nand. The dull pain in her chest increased tenfold. The realization that she had a demon sealed inside her by her beloved Hokage, or the fact that Kanoha believed she was the Kitsunin of them, could compare to the pain he was feeling now. Like white hot knives had pierced her heart in one go. For the first time in her life she had a person who had acknowledged her, treated her like a human being, became her dearest and most closest friend, and now, he will hate her, after all who would want to associate with a demon who murdered hundreds. Why does the thought of Niji hating and despising me hurt so much more? I don't understand. What is wrong with me? She felt him move. He was lifting himself on his elbows. Most of the weight on her disappeared. She gulped, worried about flooding her. He was injured and because of her. But before she could say anything, she felt him lower his head. At the same time, she felt something warm touch her abdomen. This was where the seal was located. Now, after all the explanation she heard from Mizuki, she knew what the marks meant. Ever since starting to learn, she had always been curious. It had always appeared when she channeled Chakra. His breath fanned her neck as he whispered softly in her ear. You were fated to be the one dot dot to control him, I am sure dot dot the fourth Hokage had a reason. This is not a burden, and you dot dot are no demon, Yuzumaki Naruto. Relief filled her, and she teared up more, this time, letting them flow without regret, for they were tears of happiness. The hollow in her heart had disappeared with his words. Niji didn't think of her as a demon. She didn't care for others. Let them think what they want, I am no demon and he is beside me. His lips grazed the tip of her ear, and she saw him stand up and move away, by Akigen activated, jaw clenched and body already in the traditional Hayuga to Jutsu stance. His brows were furrowed and his breathing came hard. There was blood oozing from the gash on his back. Well, this is certainly entertaining. You have managed to brainwash the Hayuga genius boy. You have talent. Filthy Kitsune yelled out the silver-haired dot. Naruto sat up and glared at him, inwardly frowning at her heart. Niji said I was no demon. He doesn't think like that. So why dot dot is my heart beating so fast? Trying to ignore it, she focused on the situation. You are a prejudiced idiot who can't tell apart a scroll, and the kunai sealed in it stated the young teen with narrowed eyes, his focus on the enemy. Haruka's eyes widened slightly, but he smiled nevertheless. The fox is the one who killed innocent people, it's the FX that's a filthy demon. 
But Naruto isn't the fox, she is an aspiring ninja of Kanahagakure, who will one day become Hokage. Naruto's head whipped around so fast that she was sure it had snapped. She was staring at her sensei with big teary blue eyes. The Hayuga's eyes had softened, but other than that, he had given no indication that he had hurt it. The scarred gave the proud, though a bit painful smile to the blonde. You are all idiots. I am going to kill you all and leave with the sacred scroll. No one can stop me the silver-haired man laughed maniacally. Something in Naruto snapped. Seeing that her sensei was hurt, eyeing the bloody back of Niji, she finally understood. I want to let you hurt Niji or Luka sensei again. She screamed, ease blazing in anger, and her blonde locks flying behind her. What can you do, demon? You are the dead last of the lot. You can't even do one pitiful clone. Whatever you fire at me dot dot I'll give you back tenfold. She whipped her hands up and put her fingers in a cross seal. Niji smirked. Iruka's face showed confusion. Had you cage bunch and no jutsu. Niji sweat dropped at the bloody pulp that was Mizuki curled up on the ground pitifully. Iruka was trying to come out of his shocked stupor. Ah dot I might have overdone it. The blonde rubbed the back of her head sheepishly, a smile plastered on her face. Niji rolled his eyes. Iruka just slumped on the ground, leaning on a tree. Naruto, come here, with one curious look at Niji, who had a small idea what was going on, but hid it by closing his eyes and leaning on another tree with his shoulder, she strolled over to the dot. Close your eyes. Doing as she was told, she felt her hair being raised, and something cold on her forehead. Opening her eyes, she was greeted with a hateless Iruka, smiling at her softly. Congratulations on graduating, Jen and Yuzumaki Naruto. She hugged the poor man then and there. Flashback end. A giggle escaped her as she turned around, burying her face in her pillow. Neja had saved me that day dot dot and he. She blushed deep red as she recalled how he whispered in her ear and how warm and fuzzy she felt when he touched her stomach. Had a grip Yuzumaki Naruto. He is Niji. Crashing around in frustration and messing the blanket a bit more, she slumped, hitting her head on the pillow. After Iruka had presented her with it, he had left, saying he had to hand in a report. Naruto had argued with him that he needed to go to the hospital, get the wounds treated, but they had declined. Turns out they were just numerous little cuts from the ninja string, nothing serious, and it could be treated at home. Before he had left, however, he had given them a weird look. I didn't know you two knew each other and were friends who take good care of our troublemaker, Niji and with a wink, he had gone, leaving an overly confused Naruto rubbing her head and a blushing Niji. Why are you red? Are you sick Naruto had put her hand on his forehead, making him back away, swatting her hand away in the process. I am fine he had said, turning his back to her and heading out. You know, Hinata has that disease too, she always turns red, especially if Kiba is around, or when she is talking to me dot dot the blonde grumbled, making the boy sigh. Hey? What's wrong? Wait your back. We need to get you to the hospital. He turned to glare at her. It's just a scratch. And I will not go to the hospital. He had found himself being yanked by the blonde. Boy, Niji team. You got hurt cause of me, I her voice trailed away. The boy sighed, then looked at her seriously. I couldn't and wouldn't let you get hurt, the fluttering in her chest increased. Don't worry, I am fine, we had better get you home, it's late. What? You need to go first, I will get back just fine. The raised eyebrow was the only answer she got, and she still didn't have her way, for he had just grabbed her sleeve and was dragging her out of the woods. Niji had walked her to her apartment complex. This was where she had given him an unexpected fast hug and a whispered arigatou. After that she had run home, closing the door behind her with a snap and sinking to the floor, her face all red and heart pounding. As she remembered this, her heart started beating fast again. Am am I sick? I need to cure this, I can't go to missions with such distractions. And I have to take a picture tomorrow. I need to sleep. She really didn't want to think of the fact that Niji had demanded her to come to their training ground after it, and that was the reason why she wanted to get up so early. No way in Hashirama's left dot anyway, that just wasn't it. He had said they needed to discuss some things. Naruto knew the talk would be about the Kaiubi. Her heart sank. She was scared for some reason, but she wasn't sure of what exactly. Plus she had made him promise to tell all about his mission. A and he, in return, had made her promise to tell him the surprise. Turning her head and resting her cheek on the pillow, the blonde drifted off to sleep, thoughts of a certain lavender-eyed boy filling her mind again. After meeting him she couldn't have a decent dream that didn't involve him in a way or another, 